Hello everyone, and welcome to more Vintage Cube. Today I have a special guest, uh, Benny Hills. So he is the trophy leader on Magic Online Vintage Cube right now. Say hi to the people. Hi people. Okay, that was weird. We had some technical difficulties. We first picked Ancestral, so not much discussion there. What do you like from this pack? Um, I would probably go with the Watery Grave here. I think just leading on a blue duel, especially when you have Ancestral, is always pretty good. And there is a brain freeze, but that's more the kind of thing you want to get later in the pack. There's also Yogwill, so yeah. lots of strong stuff. <laughs> but I would probably go with the Watery Grave here. Okay, that's what I was thinking too. And we should have more time for the rest of these packs now. Ooh, All right, sounds good. A lot of good cards here. So I know, I think you love Fractured Identity too. Along I with definitely LSB. do, yeah. That card is insane. I love Fire Confluence, but with our start, I don't think that makes too much sense. And then that's, I guess, Creeping Tar Pit. But I, I would go with Fractured Identity or Jace. I'm going to take Fractured Identity here. Totally support that. I made a, a pick order list, and that beat Mox Emerald in my pick order. That makes sense. Because, like, green Mox, like, the green decks don't need a Mox that much because they have Land War Elves, which is similar. Yeah, it's just Land War Elves that you can't sack to Natural Order or find with Green Suns. Yeah, that seems right. All right, I'm going to take this here, and then... Let's see, so we passed Yogwill, Brain Freeze. How much do you look at cards you're going to wheel versus just what you're drafting? Um, I think more about the signals I'm sending than the cards I'm going to wheel generally. Okay. Um, I guess those are sort of two sides of the same coin, but I do think, like, if I open three amazing blue cards, instead of thinking, like, oh, I hope I wheel one of these, I usually think maybe I don't want to take these because probably these two people are going to be in blue to my left. That makes sense, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so much storm. <laughs> So what do you take out of this pack? Um, I think I would probably take a time spiral here. Okay. Um, I'm not if you're just going for storm, high tide might be more important. I'm not really sure, but high, uh, time spiral is awesome if we get Narset or Leovold. Uh, we already have the watery grave, so that helps a bit with Leovold. And hmm. I mean, beyond those two storm cards, like there's a dismember or something, but nothing that's really the direction we're going at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with time spiral, and it's unfortunate they're both in the same pack. I put High Tide as like the most important Storm card, which is way higher than I think anybody else does. Um, we might wheel it, which would be insane, but I'm totally cool taking Time Spiral here. I guess, yeah, I just think of High Tide is really only good in Storm and Time Spiral has other applications, like if we can find a Narset or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, <laughs> there's a Palancron. Um, okay, there's a lot of cards here. Fallen Shinobi, what do you feel about Fallen Shinobi in general? I think it's super busted. I love this card. It's, we don't have the best start for it since we have no creatures. Right. But it is pretty early, and it can just win a game on its own sometimes. So okay. I think if I was just doing this draft on my own, that's probably what I would go with, especially with a water grave. But, I mean, we could... Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a crossroads between a really good Esper Control deck and a really good Storm deck. Well, I think Palancron might come around, and we already have Time Spiral. So, like, let's say we do get High Tide. Um, you don't need too many of this effect. You just need like one turnabout and a time spiral or something. And That's fair. And if everyone passes high tide, they'll probably pass Palancron too. Yeah, so I'm okay taking Fallen Shinobi. Um, it's just such a good card. Ooh, okay. It really is. Ooh, what do we got in this pack? Not too much, frankly. I mean, there's some good cards, but not really anything that meshes with what we're doing. Yeah, I see a Shriek Maw if we do want to go down the Esper mid-range pack or deck. Um... I love Duretti, but kind of awkward with the mana. Yeah, I think I would lean towards the Shriek Maw. It is nice that it has evasion for Shinobi. Um, and also just sweet if you can like return it to your hand and then get the effect again. And it's also, there's a lot of these effects in the queue, but this is my favorite because, I mean, Chupacabra is really the only competition, but it's really nice that you can just play for two mana instead of having to wait until four for a Necrotal or something. Oh yeah, especially because like killing Rafelos is like one of the more important things. Or there's a lot of two drops that you just need to kill. Absolutely. Um, so being able to kill those seems good. So I'm getting the feeling green white is open, given the last two packs we just opened. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and that's a very very late bird. Yeah. So the on the flip side, I really just don't like green in Vintage Cube. So <laughs> I could just I mean, see taking Catacombs. So we have extremely strong pulls towards blue. Yeah, so I could see taking Verdant Catacombs to go get Watery Grave. Um, and if we get like a black-white duel, that'll help the mana too. And ignoring the green signals... That's um... what I'm leaning towards as well, I think, yeah. Okay, cool. Hmm, okay. We got, let's see, I'm looking at Cabal Ritual, Baral, I guess Gideon if we do end up Esper. Um, what are you feeling? Mm, I would, I'm probably leaning slightly towards the Gideon. Like, 
I like these. None of these cards. None of the storm cards are particularly amazing in storm. I guess like Baral is probably eh, maybe Baral because okay. it is also good with Shinobi potentially if we do end up in that route. I'm but done for it's that. Between those two for me. What do you think? Yeah, I'll take Baral. It's on color. If we do get high tide or something like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, <no. laughs> well. <laughs> So I think here's where we decide between Fatal Push and Tendrils. Um, I'm not actually a huge fan of Tendrils. Point. That's fair, but I'm also not a huge fan of Fatal Push. Like, I, I think we'll find better removal if we do end up in that deck. And like, yeah, like, I think Storm is sort of hitting us in the face right now. Like, okay. I, would, I would take Tendrils. All right, we'll go for it. We'll see if High Tide comes around. There's Brain Freeze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, that's probably the pick here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so for those... For those who are watching, we talked before, and he's like, I don't have too much experience drafting Storm, so let's try and not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's wide, wide open. Um, well, I mean, my, my thing with Storm is, like, I, if you force it at all, I think it's horrible, but if it's this open... Oh, was, was the next tide pack the high tide pack, or was it this one? I don't know. If we don't get high tide, I would completely abort. I'm going to be honest. Um, so let's assume we're not drafting Storm. Is it a Fairgrounds Warden? Maybe? I think so. Definitely not exciting, and probably a card we want in the sideboard, but there's some match. Like, if, if we play against a green deck with no removal, it could be good. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess High Tide did not come around, so we, we waste like, a couple of these cards picks. are good. And, like, I would still take the Bloom over Condemn, probably. Like, Condemn is just not that amazing, I think. It's really reactive, and, like, it doesn't hit the creatures. Like, the creatures who you want to hit with it, like, all the Eldrazi, they attack, so you get the trigger anyway, and it's not so good. For sure, yeah. Um, trophy or wall? I would go with wall. We don't have any planeswalkers yet, but if we do end up in like an Esper mid range control deck, hopefully we'll get some. Okay. And then recruiter. I mean, we have a lot of good Shinobi targets now, at least. Yeah, true. Okay. Well, it's probably so better that, that we did not get that high tide. Yeah. It's probably better that Storm was not open. That saves us some, uh, <laughs> some struggles <laughs> down the road. There, yeah. So I think this is your pack. So what do you want from this one? Um, I'm. I think. Well, first of all, I do love Caracas. I don't think it's a pick here because we have do we do have pretty demanding mana requirements. But I think that card is really good and it's considered to be pretty good, but it's still underrated. Mm -hmm. I'm. I think I would go with a Hallowed Fountain here. Heap of Sanity is also reasonable, but our mana is a bit dicey and like we have things that are really. I guess. Yeah, we have a lot of white cards at this point, so I think I'd go with the Hallowed Fountain here. Yeah, I'm good with that too. And I also love Caracas. Just. It's so good against Reanimator, but then like Vendillion Click or Venser, you can get some good value. Um, I think, did they cut Geist of St. Traft? They did, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite things was like attack with Geist, bounce him with Caracas, or things like that. Definitely a sweet combo. I'll take Hollowed Fountain though, and we have a lot of good cards coming around out of this pack. Yeah. Okay, so from here, I think Remand stands out to me as probably the best play, although our blue is somewhat medium. Um, there's a breeding pool which helps with Verdant Catacombs a little bit, right? It lets it get. I guess we already have Watery Grave, so it's not that good. Um, yeah, that's. I think I would take Remand out of this pack probably. I agree. I do think Orzhov Signet and Council Judgment are also pretty good, but I think like two mana counter spells are so essential in any deck that's not unfair. Like just being able to deal with their unfair things and then win with your card advantage. Like the most important part in that progression is the two mana counter spell. Yeah, for sure. And Signet has a much higher chance of coming around than any of these. Same with Council's Judgment. People don't take this card very high. And white is probably the most open of our three colors. Yeah, that's Ooh, true. This is really tough. <laughs> the top left is really where we're at here. Like, I think both of those cards are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I think that in... Like, Demonic Tutor is probably the more powerful card in the abstract, but I actually am leaning towards still taking the Ashiok here. Yeah. Because we're not a combo deck, so like Demonic Tutor is still always going to be our best card, and that is pretty sweet. But I like I think Ashiok is just so so powerful, and like I mean, often we would probably be Demonic Tutoring for Ashiok if we had them both. So I think that's the one I'm leaning towards here. Although that definitely like you know if we were in any sort of combo deck, we would want Demonic Tutor, so that fully pushes us towards the Esper Cheons. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. My I like Demonic Tutor much less in mid range decks because like. At least right now, most of our cards are the same, except I guess Fractured Identity is way better. But when you're tutoring for a bunch of cards that are similar in power level, it doesn't feel as strong. Ooh, okay. So we got Venser and Tundra. 
are the two that I'm looking at first. Treasure Cruise seems okay, and then like Gideon and Blade Splicer are also quite good. My problem with Venter is he costs four, but I guess we don't have any four mana plays, so that's somewhat good. So I would be. It is also double blue, which is a bit awkward since we have no other double blue except Time Spiral, which at this point is looking a bit ambitious. That's true. So we could just take Tundra then, um, unless you want to take one of the white creatures. I think I, I like Tundra here. I think that's probably a good move. It's sad we don't have the. We, I mean, we could have had Crocus Venter, and that would have been pretty sweet. But I don't think the Crocus is coming back around. It might. I've seen Caracas go really late somehow. Ooh, okay. Well, that Wooded Foothills is not doing anything for us, unfortunately. Um, but we do have an Ancestor Recall, and I've heard that's pretty good with Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, it seems all right. We also have Fractured Identity Snapcaster Mage, which is a expensive but really strong combo too. For sure, and then even just Remand in a pinch, so I think there's a pretty good Snap deck. Yep, and we could maybe even and Wheel of Brainstorm. Find it too. Mm. Um, okay. In this pack, Sphinx's Rev is looking a little bit better in our deck. Steam Vents... See, the problem is our mana is awkward, so if we had, like, any, like, red-white fetch, Steam Vents would help with that. And then... Ravages is okay. I don't know if I like it too much in this deck. So I'm leaning towards Sphinx's Rev, but I'd be open to Steam Vents or Ravages, maybe? I like Rev here. I also just, I mean... My my intro to competitive magic was with Blue Eye Control, and I've won a lot of games with Sphinx's Rev, so I do have the, the emotional attachment there too, so I like her Rev. <laughs> was that during like Ravnica block or whatever when you played like Sphinx's Rev plus Elixir of Immortality? It was actually just after that in Modern, but that deck was absolutely brutal, and I would have hated to play against it, but loved to play with it for sure. Yeah, it was fun to watch like a couple times, but whew, it was brutal. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So I highlighted Dark Slick Shores. I think that's pretty clear the pick here. I I I agree. I, so I, I do think we should take that. Vanishing Light deserves some consideration because we have pretty bad removal for Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. Rapture Identity is our only one, but I still think this Shores is more important here. Yeah. Our man is a bit nicey and like we'll just always draw Fracture Identity. How high are you on Revel Arc as a card? Maybe not actually it'd be okay in this deck, but just in general. Not super high, honestly. In general, like most white decks want to be like most base white decks want to be lower to the ground and don't really want five drops and like most non-aggressive white decks don't have a ton of lo low creatures mm -hmm. what do you what do you think about that do you agree yeah i think that makes sense i i like it for like meme combos like it's pretty funny you can evoke it and get back like deceiver exarch and kiki jiki for example <laughs> that's fair yeah that is pretty sweet but it's i do have a bit of a tendency to not draft like wacky combos just because i usually play to win and i probably should branch out more and just do like spicy stuff sometimes yeah i think signet or tithe taker what do you think i'd probably go with the signet here i think okay that's we yeah, have that's no ramp we have a to. Rev, so we have a use for a lot of mana um we have not much green this pack's pretty medium i think i think crisis is the strongest card bane slayer angel gives us like sideboard options i think i like taking angel for the board i agree we don't want to main deck it but like, our mana is already pretty dicey, and adding a fourth color, especially when the signet adds red and not green, like, I think green will be a little bit tough to pull off here. Yeah. Have you ever cast Luka or seen anybody cast Luka in Vintage Cube? <laughs> Can't say I have. I actually made a fun Legacy Cube deck with Luka once, where it was basically like an Oath of Druids, but that was like one time and definitely never in Vintage. It seems good in Legacy Cube, but... Yeah, I've highlighted Council of Judgment. I think we talked about it before, and it came around, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, this is looking like it's going to be base blue-white with a, a black splash for a couple studs. I think that seems like a good place to be. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Ooh, Sun Titan is okay. I mean, we're not really playing any red cards. We could. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to decide if I want to do it for the people or not. <laughs> I mean, how good is Sun Titan here? It gets Ashiok, but not much else. Oh, weird. I, <laughs> I guess I got an ink eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I support it. I support it. If yeah, we can this... make that work, that'd be legendary. Yeah, this could be our one ink eye stipulation. We're both in it, <laughs> so we both drafted, and then it's done forever. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have Shinobi, so we have the combo. They never know what to expect. Yeah, double ninjas. I'm excited. <laughs> um, selfless Spirit, because we didn't take the Hydroid Crisis, so this just makes sense. It's good with the, with the ninjutsus. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope we get something sweet off that. I'm going to take procession and then, hey, we got it. Oh, that's pretty sweet, actually. Not yeah, bad one thing in this I think deck. we should mention is that we have these storm cards on our sideboard, which is a bit awkward, obviously, but I actually think Brain Freeze is a really sweet sideboard card. 
Oh, I've yeah. won many games against Storm with casting no spells except for one brain freeze while they're going off. Yeah, it's really scary because, like, I don't know, you cast, like, Wheel of Fortune after playing a couple spells, they just brain freeze you. You die. It's Tendril's less so, but I really think brain freeze is very strong. We could just pick up Teferi, Time Raveler, and then go for the instant speed tendrils on them. That is a good, that's good thinking right there. Um, whose turn is it? I think it's your turn to talk about this pack. There's no power here, nothing super, super spicy. Um, Lingering Souls is actually sort of nice in these sorts of decks, but I think at this point we just go with the Flood Strand here. Gets all of our colors, um, yeah. Just yeah. Can't really go wrong with the Fetch Land. Pretty clear. We might even wheel Lingering Souls. I don't think people take it too often. True, yeah. Ooh, I like Mox Diamond a lot. Um, what else is there? Ancestral Vision, but we already have a Recall. Although this deck is a little bit slow. And then Elspeth Conquers Death. I've actually never cast this card before, but it's also very strong. I'm leaning towards just Mox Diamond, though, just because it, it helps our mana situation. And we have a lot of threes that casting those on turn two would be nice. I totally agree. Yeah, it is a bit awkward that we still have no fours. But yeah, I think Mox Diamond is good here. I, I've yeah. had a lot of success with Elspeth Conquer Death and Pioneer, so if that could wheel, I, I do think it would be pretty good in this deck, but Mox Diamond is, is the pick here, I think. Yeah, I think. okay, I'm good with that. I mean, we could have a four. <laughs> 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 um, interesting. This is not the best pack ever. Um, if we could get an Unburial right, uh, we don't even have something to reanimate with the gifts, really. I actually think having access to a Sweeper in... Like in our deck, either whether it's main or side, is pretty nice. But I still think Seacrum Coast is probably the pick here over Languish or like Search or one of these other cards. Yeah, but I'm done with that. Spicy, but like it's triple black and not like really what we're doing. Yeah, it's kind of awkward in decks like this. But yeah, I'm okay with Seacrum Coast and then Languish might come around too. Or maybe would you play Mother's Runes in this deck? We do have 11 creatures right now. Some of them will probably end up getting cut, but. The more, I mean, if we're trying to make some ninjas work, it could be good. A force it through blocker, <laughs> or yeah, and make your attacker get through. Okay, so we can look for that to wheel, maybe. Ooh, this is actually an interesting pick, I think. So there's really two cards that I'm looking at, which are Celestial Colonnade and Path to Exile. I really love Leon and Relic Warder, but I think it's a lower power level than those two. And I'm looking at my removal, and I think we need Path a little bit more than we need Colonnade, especially with Snapcaster Mage. What are your thoughts on that? I do agree. In general, I like Colonnade better in these decks, but I think we have good mana at this point, and like our removal is really weak, like you said, so I like taking the path. Cool. Also clears the way. You know what I'm saying? True, true. <laughs> Too bad that it doesn't put in the graveyard, but we'll make it work. Yeah. So this pack, I don't think we can really do Dark Confidant. Like, well, it is... Maybe we can. We have a pretty high curve. We have a lot of fives and sixes, but we also could cut some. I actually mm -hmm. don't know. The actual possession count is three or six for Dark Confidant. Not that I we're probably no playing idea. it. But... Do you want to play it? Probably not. I mean, if like, we'll look at how our mana looks. We do have a lot of white cards, but I think I would probably lean towards Bitter Blossom here. Um, okay. It makes some flyers, and that's good with our ninjas, and it's also just like a pretty solid play, especially on turn one off of Mox Diamond. What do okay. you think? I Yeah, it's really close. I wish we could just take both and like end the draft. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, we have a good amount of card draw with Ancestral, so I'm okay with taking Better Blossom. The ninja synergy is really strong, too. True. Um, okay, I see Rishidan Port and Daze. I think if we were two colors, I would probably try and put Port in this deck, but our mana is a bit suspicious, and Daze is really strong. I, I'm a big fan of Daze, so I would probably take that here. I agree, yeah. We could also take Soulfire and try and get Time Walk next pick, but that probably wouldn't work out. Yeah, I mean, what would that be? Sixth pick time walk? <laughs> Wait, I guess we could get time warp. That could be no something. Time block. Um, it does not look like this blood crypt does anything for us, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I was looking at, like Verdant Catacombs. That's sad. We don't have any well, equipment for sort of Stoneforge. Right well, Torrential Gear will flash it back Ancestral and Path, but not too much else, I guess, Remand. It's a yeah. real bummer that it can't do Fractured Identity. I know. So, it, I mean, that does the most out of anything. How do you feel about Winter Orb? I think it can be pretty sweet in some decks, but we have very little artifact mana, so I don't think it's great for us. Okay, so I'm just going to take Gear Hulk then. Probably not play it, though. Sounds good. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, What do we need here? Part of me wants to take these. Concealed Courtyard for the mana because we have so many playables, but these cards are insane. Yeah, that's uh, I, I agree on all of that. Um, 
I think I like taking the courtyard here. We have so many fives and sixes already. And like mm -hmm. Force of Negation, we don't have enough blue cards for or enough blue mana. So I think I like the courtyard, but that is really close. It sucks that these are all in the same pack. Yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Like, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Bayou doesn't do anything for us, I don't think. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I would probably lean towards just taking Necrotal and like, actually Necrotal is honestly pretty good. Like we can search for it with Recruiter of the Guard. And we don't have any other... Oh, we have Shriek Maw, but I think that card seems like a reasonable pickup here. I don't like Thing in the Ice, and we also have a ton of creatures in the stack. Yeah, the only other thing I would consider would be Wear Tear, but that seems pretty marginal at best. Wear is bad. Tear is nice, but... Wait, no. The Artifact one is good, but we don't have Red Mana, so that's... It's a yeah. bit more awkward for us. Um, Not much here. We could take Ulamog as a sideboard card against Storm, unless you like Hypnotic Spectre. I'm not too into the Spectre, especially since we don't have a ton of black, so I like Ulamog here, I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very marginal, but... Um... I, I think we're... I can't really imagine a world where we're playing Spectre in this sort of deck, I would say. Like, we have mostly white cards. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Uh, not much here. I, I don't like this card. How do you feel about Search, actually? Unless you think there's another card we should take. Uh... I, I would probably take the Surge. Nick, I actually like Nicol Bolas, but we're not there at all. And Surge is pretty weak, and also especially weak in our deck, but, like... I don't know. There could conceivably be a world where there's like a bunch of stuff we need to cut and we need something that does something. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe Arena for slower matchups? Yeah, I think that's honestly like a, a pretty nice sideboard option if our mana can support it. Containment Priest is actually awkward because it stops the ninjutsu ability, but I think it's better than these. Yeah, and it like, it's, it hurts us a bit, but it hurts some decks way more. Yeah. Oh, Wombo Combo. <laughs> we got there, the last two picks. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty sweet, actually. So the combo is Containment Priest. If a creature comes back, they get exiled. And then Parallax Wave, you exile creatures, and then when it dies, they come back. So you could just permanently exile a bunch of things. It's pretty sweet. Just explaining to the viewers, mostly. For sure, yeah. Okay. So... And I, Parallax Wave also just seems pretty decent in our deck. We have, I guess we don't have a ton of it in the battlefield, but we have Wall of Omens, Recruiter. Like, we have some stuff. Yeah. No, I, I think it's... Definitely a sideboard, but probably a main deck card. Um, we just need to cut some cards. I think I might just step that we're playing Ink Eyes in our deck, if you're cool with that. <laughs> I like that plan, yeah, I'm definitely on board. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm looking at maybe Gear Hulk for the first cut. Yeah. I Lotus Bloom's kind of okay. I guess we have a lot of fives that help, helps us cast, but I might just it's prefer a land. I mean, just makes you cast a five on four. That's not a huge upgrade. It's good with Rev, but yeah, I think I, I'm going to that. I think I'd rather just play a land. Yeah. Um, we could yeah, cut... one thing, I, would, I think you are like an amazing drafter, but I think you play too few lands sometimes. That's my most consistent qualm with your decks. That's almost certainly true. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... And you... I don't count Mox Diamond as a land, so like I think we need lands plus Mox Diamond, because like, if you discard a land card, then you're down what you would have had previously. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so now we need to cut, like, at least three, because I think this is certainly a 17 land deck. I would say we could probably cut Baneslayer. We have a lot of fives, and it just, like, dies to removal. Yeah, I'm okay with cutting Good that. Card, but yeah. I'm moving this so our curve looks better, even though it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, and so Recruiter of Guard is Toughness, right? Yes, Toughness two or less. So that gets... So it can't find Fairground Warden, unfortunately, but it can find Shriek Maw. Yeah, that seems okay. I kind of want to cut time spiral to be honest it's fun but i do think if our own it, like it's probably not the best for us like we have a lot of card advantage already if we just play ancestral and then time spiral it sort of counters our own ancestral yeah and like you know we're when we get up to six mana we should have a bunch of stuff in play anyway so we don't need to read the fuel that much yeah yeah good point point. and sphinx's rev does that but just better so if you wanted to win i think you would just cut ink eyes from this but we're not doing <laughs> that <laughs> Yeah, and guys, it's going to be the MVP. It, it's also hilarious that we have so much anti-synergy with it, too, but I think it'll be fun. Here's the pro move. You end up turning Flash and Containment Priest and then Ninjutsu, so it's not in play when the Ink Eyes hits the battlefield. They never see it coming. Now we're talking. I'm excited about this one. Um, one more cut, unless you want to run 16, but I think I'd rather run 17. Yeah, I think I agree. Let's see. We got... Hmm. Could be Fairgrounds Warden, because we already have Necrotal and Shriek Maw. Well, he does have the synergy with Containment Priest, though, still. Oh, that's true. That's true. We could cut the Signet, because we don't have that many fours to ramp into. That's a good call. Yeah, I like that idea. 
Okay, let's do that. And we also and then... have a two already. Our mana's like not terrible. Let's see. So Verdant Catacombs can get... I think it's still worth running even though we're not going to have too many fetchable lands. Actually, I think we should cut one more spell, actually. Because if we have 16 lands and Mox Diamond, like, I can just imagine us missing a land drop a lot there. And we have Sphinx's Rev in our deck, so we want to play lands almost every turn. Oh, yeah, I miscounted. You're right, you're right. Um, oh, I we... think we could cut Brawl, actually. Oh, yeah, good call. Brawl's pretty bad. Although, turn four fraction... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, this is awkward to do. I think we're mostly white. Are you okay if I just count out all the mana? It's kind of awkward to team this long distance. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we have mostly white cards right now. We have Verdant Catacombs does not fetch white mana. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we actually need quite a few planes. As far as blue goes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So blue is, I might not even run a basic island. And then black, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I would add is, Whoa. Maybe we can run one basic island? Some... I think I like that, because we also should keep in mind that we have days, and so if we have our fast lands but no island, that could be awkward. That's true. Yeah, and just having one, like, we have Path to Exile, so if we run into a situation where we want to, like, path a Bitter Blossom token to hit blue or something, it at least opens that Great up. Point. Yeah. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 white seems fine. Yeah, I think this man is actually pretty good. Yeah. All right, let's run it back. You guys, round one. Hello and welcome to round one. Playing against Miss Vixen, and I think this hand is okay. It's really slow though. But it does have the combo, so I, I think I like keeping this hand. Remand is like, it's solid. Hopefully they don't have a backbreaking turn two play, but um, I think it's a solid hand. Yeah, I'm also our deck is pretty slow in general. Like unless we draw Mox Diamond, a lot of hands are gonna look like this. Yeah, and like we're trying to win on card advantage because we do have a lot of value. Like with the ninjas, with Revelart getting back things, Ancestral Recall. So I'm okay keeping this too. Ooh, Snapcaster. So I'm going to lead on Blooded Strand to play around Wasteland or something. Sounds good. Past and also, well, we could just get... Do you like getting an island here, or should we try and get one of our duels? So we have a... Let's see, because our duels are blue-white and blue-black. So we already have double-white and double-black. So I would probably just get a basic island... That takes off the option, well, there's something. It mm. takes off the option of pathing one of our own things to get a second blue, but that's pretty marginal. We don't have a path or something that costs two blue, and we could probably draw another blue, so I think yeah. getting an island is fine. Yeah, I think double blue, I guess, would be like if we want to Snapcaster our Remand, although I think that's going away. Um, or Sphinx I hope they don't take Remand, because that means they have something scary next turn. Necrotol is looking really bad in this matchup already. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's true. Same with Tree Claw, so not ideal. Interesting. Oh, okay. So okay, nice. Here's what's gonna happen. They're going to hmm. Try to think of what land to play. I'm leaning towards swamp. I agree. I think okay. that's the right move here. Mostly because like concealed courtyard we want to play, but they could have a turn where they like wasteland our courtyard and then we can't remand something because they know we have remand. So just play as safe as possible. Yeah. Remand is normally very good against Black Lotus, like they stack it and then they just can't recast it, but unfortunately they know about it, so we can't really get him here. Yeah, it is weird they played it out. Vindicate yeah. our Swamp. I think that's fine. Yeah, I think we just let this happen, because we have a lot of land. They're, they only have three cards in hand. I'm going to float a yeah. mana just in case, but we just let it happen. Yeah, cool. I think I like that line. Also, like they don't know we drew the Water Grave, but we now do have at least double of all our colors. Yeah. We're only taking two. Also, we should note that it has been really good that we have not cracked this Flood Strand, because they could have hit our blue. That's what I'm... Ooh, okay. That might get us back into this. Um, I like just playing planes for the same reason as last turn. That sounds good to me. Because um, if we draw Mox Diamond, I mean, I guess we're probably not going to Necrotal anything, but we could still make double black that way. Um, yeah, that seems fine. I'm pretty sad that they know about the Ink Eyes. Really removes the gotcha moment. Uh, I know. We'll get there. Don't worry. We will. Yeah, it's still, it's still early in the first game. <laughs> All right, they do absolutely nothing. I don't even think I want to fetch. Yeah, I like just untapping. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling just Concealed Courtyard go. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there will come a certain point where we care about this two damage enough to want a blocker, but next turn we can, like, shock and wall and hold every man if we need to. Yeah, that seems fine to me. And then hopefully we can draw into a Fractured Identity mana. I kind of want to remand this. Yeah, I like that here. 
Okay. Because we also do want to draw more lands. Um, so now, how do we feel about fetching up the basic? I think at this point, Wasteland will get us either way, so I'd probably just get Tundra, I think. Yeah, just I'm okay like, with Again, that. if we draw a path, that could sometimes matter. Like this, Remand. So now if they want to play it, they have to play Black Lotus. Secret Coast kind of hurts, but that's fine. Actually, it's pretty good. That lets us cast Fractured Identity. True, yeah. And we don't need a 4-drop next turn. Ooh. Ooh. So we can't really get there with Shinobi because they're going to play Ophiomancer, which just actually does not block Necrotal. So here's the plays I'm looking at. We shock off Watery Grave and play Necrotal, and then we hope to fall on Shinobi next turn. Or we just play Conservative, play Wall of Omens, play Seachrome Coast, and then we have Fractured Identity next turn. Well, the thing is, next turn they'll, they'll just definitely block with the Snake because they'll get a new one. So the, the window when we want a Shinobi is when they'll have attacked with a Snake, which would be the turn after, I think. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. And I'm going to hold up uh, blue-white is a little bit scarier. We have Ancestral, so I guess that makes sense to hold that Fantastic, up. Yeah. And I'm just going to play the tapped land. Sounds good. So this Ophiomancer is surprisingly annoying against our ninjas, but we'll find a way around that. We have quite a few flyers, which will get some value. That's a great point, yeah. Let's draw Recruiter the Guard into Selfless Spirit this turn. That would be awesome. So hoping this is just Ophiomancer. They have not used Black Lotus and they have not drawn land. Yeah. Which is quite weird. Because like, if they have spells, why aren't they using playing them? I'm okay with it. Like the longer we the longer we can just put lands into play and draw cards, the better. Yeah. They don't know about the fracture identity, right? They do not. So mm. part of me feels like they're holding up counter magic, because they did play Black Lotus, I think turn two, and then just had it in play. But I'm trying yeah, to think that's a good point. What else we really want to do here? Because if we play Necrotal, we have to kill our own wall. We could just go Water Grave Pass and then end a turn Containment Priest and try and, like, if they attack with everything, which they probably will, then we could get him with Shinobi. All right, let's do that. Water Grave tapped. Pass turn. Yeah, and then if they want to counter something, they have to deal with this. Yeah. The awkward situation happens if, like, uh, never mind, that doesn't even exist. Because, yeah, we can ninjutsu the Containment Priest if it goes unblocked. And if it becomes blocked, then it'll die. Yeah. Hopefully they go for a shinobi of their own. That would be... Hmm. This feels like it's... I guess I just let it happen. Yeah, but that is a bit unfortunate. They'll almost definitely tie Hollow Scholar and take... Actually, probably Fractured Identity, I guess. Yeah. All these creatures being black is so frustrating. Yeah, and they keep on seeing our hands so they know all our tricks. Yeah. Um, do we want Ooh, to play... We play... Right here. That's what we want. That would be awesome. Do we want to play out Containment Priest just to deny them the option? Um, seems reasonable. Well, I doubt they'll take it, but I guess we probably should do that because they'll only take it if it's really good against them, and if it's really good against them, we want it in play. Yeah, basically, my mantra is like, anytime your opponent can have a decision, giving them less options is just better. Because like, they could have something like Spell Pierce in their hand and then leave us with Fractured Identity, which we won't be able to resolve for quite a while. Um, whereas Containment Priest could cause issues somewhere. Like, for yeah. example, if they have Shinobi with Black Lotus. The one thing again, like, they can now kill it with Sorcery Speed Removal, but if they point a Sorcery Speed Removal spell at this, that seems fine. Yeah, yeah, it's not all upside, but it seems okay. Yeah, I definitely agree that it's net upside. Oh, are they finally cracking the Lotus? Mm. Armageddon? Oh, that would be bad. Oh, that's mm. fine? It's pretty slow, but we don't have a way to deal with it. Or, like, we really don't have a way to do anything right now. Yeah, I'm just going to take this. Okay, actually, now they have to block, like, we can kill this, we can trade the Containment Priest with something that's better than Containment Priest here, so that's good. Ooh, Ashiok's Ooh. very good here. Yeah. So, I'm just going to attack without playing a land, and see what they do, because Ink Eyes costs 5, okay. I have no idea which one of these things I'll trade with. I guess Ophio Match is probably the most likely, but any of them seems fine. Yeah, that's actually not bad for us. And all just for that one damage. I think that was a bit of a misplay on their part. Or they just take it because they forgot about Shinobi. I really wish they had a creature, but Shinobi is definitely the move here. Ooh, okay, so we get our Snappy back. That seems okay. They still only have three mana, that's crazy. And they lost their Black Lotus, so definitely playing Planes. I think I like just getting down Ashiok now. I think I agree, yeah. Blue, black, white. Because um, it's hard for them to kill her, and if they spend all of their creatures, like if they swing all out at Ashiok, then we can just end of turn Snapcaster and get him with Shinobi. Yeah, and we don't even lose value because we can still recast the Snapcaster later. Monastery, Mentor, Gideon? Their deck is very weird. 
Dang it, we hit the one creature that we can Necrotal. <laughs> <laughs> well, they showed Gideon, so they probably have some white cards. Yeah, just not the white lands, but this core supporter will help fix that for them. That's true. But I, somehow we're still in this, despite them having Black Lotus in their, I think, opening hand, basically. Yeah. Turn one core supporter would have been such a strong line if they could have done that. Yeah. I really just want to see their hand, because it's all spells, and I have no idea what it could be. Yeah. I wish we had a way to interact with artifacts and enchantments. We don't have a single way, and that is a pretty important form of interaction in this format. We have, um... Ooh, that's not very good for them, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We have the, um, what is it, Council's Judgment? Yeah, that's a good point. And I guess uh, Fracture Identity. Oh, wow. <laughs> so... There's actually there's multiple good options here. Yeah. We can let Ashiok die... And then that lets us fall in Shinobi and recur Snapcaster. We can trade with Tide Hollow Scholar, and then we keep Ashiok. We get to put a Monastery Mentor into play soon. I don't know what I like better. Yeah, that's so close. Um, hmm. I think I'm... Well, so it, the other thing is, if we get Shinobi in play, that's good for the first hit, but we will never get another hit in, probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's actually so close. We could also ink as their Tide Hollow Scholar. <laughs> True. I think I kind of like just trading with their scholar. Yeah, I think that seems reasonable. Um, and then we can also, we could even like fracture identity, their Ophiomancer, and then they'll never be able to kill the Ashiok. That's very true. Yeah, I'm all for that. And Ashiok, like putting Monastery Mentor into play, getting a bunch of tokens, like, is going to be so good. So I'm going to block here and here. Ashiok takes three. We definitely want to make sure to not ninjutsu Monastery Mentor back into their hand. Yes, that is a good thing to point out. Although, it's style points, right? <laughs> That's true. Okay, land was okay. I'm going to uptick Ashiok. Going to be honest, I have not played with Ashiok in a long time. I think I really? value her less than most people, which is probably wrong. It's but... not. It's like a frustrating card in a lot of ways. Like I'm not sure it's healthy for the format, but I do think it's healthy for your win percentage. Yes. Another thing we could do is Fractured Identity in their Coercive Portal just to win the super late game. I honestly, I think I like that, actually. I mean... They, there's a decent chance they'll kill... Well, no, they can't even really kill the Ashiok. They would have to kill P Wall and animate Shambling Vent. Yeah, so they, they would, would need, need a, a land spell. and a one mana removal spell. Yeah, I think I like taking out the portal. Okay, I'm going to hold up Watery Grave, because it's the scariest, I guess. Fraction Identity... this. Man, if Wall could attack, that would be so sweet. Oh my gosh. I'm going to play this tapped, because our life total is, like, low-ish. Yeah, and we also do have, like, Bitter Blossom in our deck. Yeah, that's true. I'm sad it's we don't have Dark Confidant. Have one creature with all of these Ashiok activations. Yeah, their deck is... I just want to know what's in their hand. I really wish we had Thoughtseize or something. Yeah. I guess our best option is reanimating Tide Hollow. Okay, that's not too bad. It might be hard to keep our Ashiok alive next turn. It's a bummer that we didn't get that Languish back during the draft. That's true. But we have Necrotal, which is actually a really good blocker on this board. I guess, aside from Shambling Vent. But luckily, Shambling Vent will not kill Ashiok. Good point. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's vote for homage. Um, another option is just play Ink Eyes, hold up, regenerate. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> not great, but it's something. Really unfortunate we did not hit a land because we could have gone like. No, I guess we can't even cast Fallen Shinobi. I think I just like playing Necrotal into Gideon. Yeah, that seems good to me. Yeah. Maximizes our chances of being able to get an attack in next turn. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, we can double activate Gideon if we like. I guess that doesn't do anything, never mind. Give this one something. Indestructible. Pass turn. So they can kill Ashiok, but it's going to be really expensive for them. Uh-oh, shocking there's a little scary. Hopefully they don't have a fractured identity. That would be rough. They also do have 14 cards in the library, so like, while they're fighting this Ashiok, they're slowly milling out. That's my biggest problem with Ashiok. Like, even if you win the battle, you're still down so many cards. Yeah. You might just lose 10 turns from now. Wait, what is the blue card under Ashiok? Uh, it is Riftwing Cloud Skate. Ooh. And we exiled two lands. We fit a lot of lands with Ashiok, actually. One, two, three, four, five. So. Not exactly the cards we want to hit. Ooh, okay. That's, uh, that's pretty scary. Let's see what they do. They can bounce Necrotal and kill Ashiok. I guess they could just kill Ashiok anyway. Oh, plusing seems great for us there. Yeah, I'm on board with that especially because they probably swing out now right and then we just get to shinobi which also exiles more cards from their deck true yeah 
Yeah, this seems fine. Just killing their Ophiomancer. Uh, hang on. What if we kill their Chupacabra, and then we ink eyes and kill the Ophiomancer? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I think that's actually, that seems really good, actually. Yeah, okay, let's do that. <laughs> good working, guys. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably, I think it might slightly be worse for our chance of just winning, but it's definitely way sicker, and it's also pretty good for our chance of winning. Yeah, the moral victory. Also, let's yeah. see, we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're one lane short of being able to double ninja here. Oh, wait, we could draw two lands. That's true. Okay, double land, let's go. Vote homage. No. Nope. Oh, I mean, that's actually a solid draw. But, yeah, it's still uh, pretty good. I kind of want to cast the spirit pre-combat. Yeah, I like that plan. Easy. It's a bit sad that we won't gain any life, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, hmm. The downside with doing that is we don't have regenerate up for ink eyes. That's the only downside. I but... kind of think they're... I guess they do have, like, Chupacabra, but my sense is that their removal will be a little bit more, like, exile or talk with Teferi. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and Teferi talk makes it... Pretty easy. Also, they could just counter this. Path Gideon. Okay. Well, I guess it's better that that happened now. Yeah. I'm gonna get the island. No, actually, we need more black. I'm gonna get a swamp. Yeah, that seems good. They, they do have this Teferi on the board still, but, like, they do need to actually kill us. We could also Tide Hollow Skuller to disrupt their hand. But the thing is, then they could just tuck it with Teferi if they really need the thing. That's fair. Okay. We're definitely attacking them. Are we just going with the, the original line, Ink Eyes? I think we should. Like, I mean, yeah, I think All we right. should. For value. Yeah. You have to have another black. Yeah, top draw. Need black. All right. Again, like, if we, like, were all all in on winning this game, this might not be the best line, but it's pretty awesome. And it, like, it is good. We have a solid board now. Yeah. I mean, this is the best Ink Eyes will... Actually, it could get better, but... <laughs> I mean, it's still out there. We could copy something next turn. And... <laughs> hey, we also do still have uh, Selfless Spirit to protect it, so... Yeah, I'm about this. It would be really cool if we could have done Shinobi and it, guys. But I guess that was, uh... We were a long way away from that with them having Path. Um, okay, so we get Chupacabra. We could also get and make our own Opium Mentor, but it's probably better just to kill theirs. Yeah. Just make sure well, we can we keep hitting with creatures. What'd you say? Just make sure that we can keep attacking with our ninjas. Because, like... This is still in play, and the next turn, this is going to attack. Yeah. So the fewer blockers yeah, they have, the better. One with, uh, with evasion makes it very hard for them to keep us off the Shinobi this turn. Do they know about the Shinobi? I, I think the first Tide Hollow Scholar did not see it, but the second one did. Okay. It is a bummer that we don't have any man lands, because that would be nice with the, the ninjas as well. Yeah, that colonnade would be so good in this deck. Yeah. Elspeth. Okay. That's actually fine. We can our self spirit will be good here. Although I guess they could tuck it with the fairy. We'll see what they do. Part of me thinks they want to just uptick. I okay. think the best line is uptick Elspeth and minus the fairy, but hopefully they just plus the fairy again. Yeah, because that makes their deck even smaller. Yeah. Mm, they um, found the line. Do we sacrifice this or do we want to draw it in a few turns? I think we're happy to draw it as long as we have the shinobi in place still. Okay. Well, also well. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll draw it pretty soon, because we do still have this portal going. And they do have to chump block the ink eyes. They have to chump, up, chump block both, sort of. I guess they could trade with the, the tube. So we vote homage. Their deck is pretty sweet. It's basically like our deck, but with more planeswalkers and less ninjas. And Black Lotus. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, mm -hmm. Recruiter. What can Recruiter find? Revelark? Uh, wait, I think it can't find Revelark, unfortunately. Oh. Isn't that a 4-3? Yeah, you're right. Cannot find Rebel Arc. Um, we, can, we have a... Oh, no. We can buy Shriek Maw, but that's bad. Hmm. Well, I think we're going to play Necrotal Kill a Soldier, at the very least. Yeah. If we do that, then we have five, six mana left over. Okay, we'll start there. I really want to hold up Ink Eyes um, Regenerate. So, if we just attack them with everything, they'll probably just, like, yeah, I guess block the Ink Eyes with the Snake, and then double block the Chupacabra. Which so, is... Yeah, we... I like just attacking here, I think, and then just regenerating the ink eyes when they block with the snake. Okay, I'm going to play the land pre-combat, because we could get into a situation where we need to regen and want to ninjutsu as well. Yeah, yeah, good point. But I think probably what's going to happen is post-combat, we recruit of the guard. Actually, I guess it's better to attack them, right? I was thinking of attacking think so. Teferi. Like, uh, I think I like going for them here. Like, if we got it in a shinobi hit, that would be super good yeah i mean their library gets smaller and yeah that seems better 
Okay, so they make the play we thought. So we regen. Thank guys, so good. <laughs> I think we probably would have hit Elspeth off of the uh, Fallen Shinobi activation, which hurts a little <laughs> bit. Instead, we got a cheap recover there. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, so I, and we just cast Recruit here, I guess, and Selfless Spirit, maybe. Snapcaster is our best hit, but that's dead, unfortunately. Yeah, the problem is that I guess that's still fine. They can down tick Elspeth, but I think that's not great for them. Because then we'll still have two dudes that can get in there. Yeah. And they have to win the game soon. Yeah. Although I guess we technically deck out before they do. Oh, true. <laughs> for some reason, it doesn't feel like we've been drawing two cards every turn, even though we have. Yeah. So we do that. You know, now that I think about it, maybe I wanted to get Shriek Maw. Oh, actually, yeah, because then they wouldn't have three blockers. And it has evasion. Selfless but... Spirit does too, but so, uh, but oh, yeah, well, good thing we couldn't have even held up mana to regenerate in guys here. But that's probably gonna. Well, no, we, we're still not dead because Selfless Spirit into Shinobi can still win the game potentially. And I think also Ancestral Recall targeting them is a very oh, viable true. game plan. Great point. Do we fetch to thin? Um, I Please. actually think yes. Like our life total does matter a bit, but we don't have that many cards, and we're drawing two cards, so. It's thinning times two. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we fetched then with only one I possible really hit. Them. Um, the one problem is Elspeth, but we do have Council's Judgment. I'm going to try and sneak a Carnage in there. Good call. Oh, they found the line. Well, there's a Shriek Maw. I think I'm just going to play Shriek Maw into Selfless Spirit. Seems good. And actually, yeah, they're under... Like, it's going to be pretty hard for them to avoid us getting a hit in now. Yeah. They can, they can kill them and talk one of them, but we'd still have another. I guess they can block the Shriek Maw with a Shambling Vent. But that's still, like, not the best block for them. Yeah, and they have to spend, like, some of their mana doing that and whatnot, not doing other things. Yeah. But this Elspeth is going to be a problem soon. we got to find that Council Judgment pretty quickly. Yeah. Fortunately, we have, what, Recall? Um, we have Course if Portal is drawing us cards. Sphinx's Rev. Sphinx's Rev. Oh, I forgot about that one. No, we don't do a thing. We need to. Uh-oh. Okay. I think the three life, yeah, no, we don't really need that in the graveyard, so three life could do something. We'll see if they kill off the Deferi to tuck our Shriek Maw, or just bust and go for the block. Hopefully they go for the Shriek Maw, or for the Shambling Vent block, and we can find a path. That would be, yeah, if we draw, like, Path, Coercive, or um, Council's Judgment, that would be the best case, I think. Ooh. Yeah, or actually just Ancestral into those. Well, I almost want to hold Ancestral to target to them, but I guess Elspeth does kill us faster, so you're right. I mean, Elspeth will kill us this turn if we don't deal with it, so... Right, yeah, if we draw Ancestral, we are targeting ourselves. The Scarab God. That's pretty good. Gotta find that path. Come on, deck. We have a lot of good draws here. And we have two chances. I'm still gonna vote Carnage just in case. Yeah. There we go, okay. there's one. And Bitter Blossom. Okay. So, there's actually... So we could just cancel Judgment the Elspeth, but we could also... Oh, wait, no, dang it, now they have Shinobi activation up. Yeah, or oh, sorry, God, uh, yeah. Uh, God, yeah. So they can Chupacabra or Shriek Maw. I think we need to kill Elspeth because that kills us immediately, but we're pretty much just dead here. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all correct. So I'm going to start with this. Um, I guess time is a bit of a concern too, so I'll try and play a little bit yeah. faster. It's hard when we're both talking to play quick. Yeah. I play slow to begin with. Maybe they'll vote for their own Scarab God. That's an option. They could also activate Scarab God in response. True, yeah. They probably should have, in our draw step, activated Scarab God. Yeah. To get the title of color back. Ooh, yeah, that's a good option. Although I guess the only way we win is, like, drawing two ridiculous cards. Opponent's deep in the yeah, tank, think, though. Yeah, if they... I actually think if they don't use Scarab God in response, we should just vote for that. Because I think we're still going to die to the board, even if we kill Elspeth. But if we get a Shinobi hit in, we could win. Yeah, I think they're going to kill our Shriek Maw here, but... Yeah, it does look like you're right. Yep. Goodbye, friend. All right, I think uh, I think that might be GG then. And in the interest of time, maybe we should scoop it up because yeah. even without the alphabet, that's just a lethal attack. Yeah. All right. Game two. I wonder if we would have won if we had gone to the Shinobi there. Having our own Elspeth would be pretty nice. I think we probably would have hit it. It's hard to say. Part of me wants to bring in Baneslayer Angel. How do you it's feel about that? It's not good against the fairy. But it is, like, a flyer, so it goes over their, their dudes on the ground. I think Phyrexian Arena is also an option. Ooh, that's true. Um, okay, what do we want to get rid of? I guess that's where to start. Necrotol Maybe... and Drake Maw both hit some things, but I think they don't hit enough. 
Okay, I prefer to get rid of Necrotol because Shriek Maw at least has evasion, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'm also looking at Fairgrounds Warden, thinking it's somewhat medium against all the like enter the battlefield effects they have, but it it's is good, good with Fair containment. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. I think I'm okay I keeping think it in. Maybe play. Um, oh, it's really sad that we didn't get that lingering souls back. But I actually think Spectral Procession might look decent here. I like it. Um, I've never you... played Spectral Procession in a non-mono white deck, but. Today's the day. <laughs> Our mana's not that bad, I don't think. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is maybe Baneslayer, but it would, is it better than Shriek Maw? I think I would say yes. It has, okay. like, it's all, they both have evasion, and Baneslayer, like, just wins the game very quickly if they can't deal with it. Okay. I'm going to run it like this then. Hopefully, we don't lose to Monastery Mentor, but we probably won't. All right. Yeah, Mentor, we have Path. We're just going to draw Ancestral, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. Oh, or Ashiok. I'm going to keep this. Yeah, that looks amazing. Um, I think I want to discard the island because we have a lot of double white cards. Yeah, I think it's either island or swamp, because we like with, especially with Spectral Procession. Um, yeah. And I'm good with island. We have more black than white in the or than blue in the deck, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to discard island. Okay, we hold up Reband. I'm going to end of turn Containment Priest and then Ashiok. Yeah. And then just like having Ashiok and Remand up should be pretty sick. Yeah, they get one turn to do like some crazy Black Lotus stuff. Ooh, okay. Well, no, that makes discarding the island awkward. <laughs> That's true. Not a problem though. We'll draw Seacrum Coast here. Three cards, no land. Gideon to Fairy Cores. Oh, wow. Get some gas there. Yeah, glad we got rid of those. So, this is the crucial turn. Don't have Tide Hollow. That's okay though. Do they I want to take remand here? But then we still have this Ashiok going to work. I guess they have anguish on making, so hopefully they don't have that in hand. Oh, interesting. Did not expect that one. Do they have like Black Lotus into Ophiomancer? Or like hmm. Alright, well, I think this is going in our favor. We get Riftwing Cloud Skate, which is really good. Yeah. They have their own Ashiok. I'm not going to attack. I think I'm fine trading. Yeah. I think that seems wise. And also, like, Ashiok Ultimate is a legit possibility. I've never seen that happen, but it's very close. <laughs> the problem is the clock of Ashiok. I think I'm definitely going to remand this. Yeah. All right, we um, want to find a blue source and a way to kill that tight hollow skeleton now. The, the clock of Ashiok, like, upticking is, like, roughly the same as her ultimate in draft. Yeah, fair. But if we can see... Part of me wants to just put a Riftwing Cloudgate into play now. I really wish if we had that island, we could hold up Snap Remand if we did that. But yeah. unfortunately, we got punished. Oh, wait, no, we can't. That, a Containment Priest would stop that. Right. Good call. All right, we're just going to uptick Ashiok then. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I'm just Chupacabra Phantasmal Image. So I'm going to play Gideon. And I kind of want to just give Containment Priest lifelink. Well, I kind of like Vigilance, because we do, like, we want the Gideon to maintain its loyalty, too. That's true. Yeah, the uptick, yeah, okay, I'm on board with that. Vigilance, um, do you like attacking? I think I want to attack. Thing. You want to attack? I think so, yeah. Okay. Like, if we get our Snapcaster back, I think that's a, that's a good trade for us, yeah. And also, like, with Gideon plus Containment Priest, that actually is a real clock. Especially since they basically have to spend their turn just dealing with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's draw Fallen Shinobi. Ooh. That would be so good. Come on, deck. Um, I think we do just eat that and then swing. Yeah, because we can also just snap and then eat something else next turn. Yeah, okay. Council Judgment. Bring back Snapcaster. Now I'm going to give lifelink. Yeah. Not only are we doing it, but we're doing it quickly, so we have good time for game three. Perfect. Six. They're down to ten. That's really low. And we're going to hit them for four, five, six. Eh, probably not going to end up... Uh-oh. We've hit... Like, Ashiok Exile, most of the scary stuff we've seen so far. Yeah, Big Elspeth wouldn't be too bad, because we can just Council's Judgment. Scarab God is fine. We could just, yeah, we can basically exile anything. Yeah, I guess Elspeth is probably the worst, because it leaves a more of a lasting impact than anything else. But, yeah, Council Judgment really does not care what you are. Like, it'll exile literally anything. Yep. And I guess Gideon Activation, we can also, if we really need to emblem here, we can eat two things. Yeah. I'm trying to, looking back to that Mox Diamond play, I'm trying to decide if it was actually a misplay or if we just got punished for it. Yeah, I'm not sure, because we, I guess we probably should have discarded Swamp because we cut most of our double black cards, now that I think about it. Yeah, that's fair. And we also do, like, 
we have fewer islands in the deck. Okay, that seems okay. We, yeah, that's fine. Did they escalate that or just? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah they discarded damnation. It's weird because they knew what card was in our hand. Yeah. So yeah, I think next time we should discard a swamp. But in the main deck configuration, it's better to have double black. Ophiel Mans. They have one card in hand. Oh whoa! I did not realize they were so low on cards. I guess that's what happened when you cast when you escalate and cast another spell in one turn. Yeah. So I kind of like holding up Snapcaster Remand, but we could also. Then we have just... no attack though. Or, I mean, we can attack, but they'll just block and get another snake immediately. Yeah, so, yeah, they have one card in hand, being as aggressive as possible, especially because we have Gideon uh, ultimate to, like, deal with the Scarab God seems okay. I would probably just attack first, just, like, I mean, okay. yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Yeah, I, I guess can... it lets them block with Ophiomancer. Okay. okay, so empty board, we have six power, they have one card, and we can exile something else, so I think it's looking pretty good. Yep. Play you... They're also one mana shy of being able to play the Scarab God and exile something, so that's good. That is really nice. Okay, this hits this. Really curious. It feels like they have a counter spell, like the way they're playing, but maybe they just don't like passing priority. I guess you can't get that feel, but then we uptick here, give him indestructible. I think if we didn't have the Gideon minus six available, it would be a little bit greedy to go for the, for the Council of Judgment there, but since we still have an exile on tap, I think we're all right. Yeah, like, this is fine. One level end? Nice. Right, Gideon eats this. Now, pretty much just Elspeth. Please concede. Okay, get in there. Man, this is so much more grindy than playing Storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we haven't even drawn Ancestral. So unlucky. That's true. That would be a pretty nice top deck, I think. Although, if we could go Ancestral into Shinobi, Ninjutsu, Snapcaster, Mage, Flashback, Ancestral, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> oh, man. That sounds so good. Is it really oh, Elspeth? No, that's so bad that they're cracking that. They drew it, didn't they? They actually drew the one card. Please. They're making us wait. Yeah, they oh, are. My oh, gosh. Oh, okay. Well, we have Fractured Identity. We have Rev. We have Ancestral. We have any flyer. Yeah, we have a lot of options. They also have to chump block. Uh, doesn't really do a whole lot, but it's probably still worth casting. I'd say so, because it also is an attacker that they that they have to block, or I guess they don't have to block, but they can work on their one ones. Yeah, so we're going to give Indestructible, I'm going to eat one of them, so now they have to chump with everything, and then they can't really attack Gideon. Yeah. And now they're in this weird phase where we're attacking every turn, and they have to chump block every turn. So even though Elspeth is going to get to ultimate pretty quick, they just won't have any dudes in play, so it won't matter. Yeah. Plus, now we actually have gone through all of their threats that we've seen that I can think of, right? Yep. I mean, Scarab God's gone. I'm going to F6 so we can look through. Ashiok's gone. Teferi. I guess Big Teferi is still in the deck. Oh, I still thought that was Big Teferi. Yeah, yeah no, right. they have... Jeez. <laughs> their deck is really good. Oh, Ooh. no. That turns off all our flyers. That's a good series of draws. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. I can't... No! <laughs> A little late. I think I'm still going to give this indestructible and swing in. Yeah. We don't have any form of like direct damage, right? No collective brutality or anything? No. Um, I guess I don't want to let them see. I'm going to tech them with these two, but I think I now hold back Fairgrounds Warden. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I, it also is a bummer that we don't have the, uh, the Shriek mob because that could swing through everything. Yep. Yeah, it just kind of didn't pan out the way we wanted. Play this. We're still um, not dead, but it's definitely, that Lingering Souls is pretty rough. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what draws we could possibly have to get out of this. Factual Procession, maybe? Yeah, that'd be good sideboarding. Although, they ultimate Elspeth soon. They can kill Gideon if they attack him with all their spirits. But then we win if we draw a removal spell. Yes. Or, yeah, I mean, they, just, they can't attack with everything there. Do we keep Gideon alive? I feel like we do. I actually think we don't. Like, this means a removal spell wins, and I don't think Gideon, like... These one ones will beat Gideon eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Self of Spirit just kills them. Okay. All right. We got some draws here. Let's see it. That was a very ambitious yeah, attack funny. by them, actually. <laughs> 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 oh, perfect timing. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I mean, I guess I just attack and see what happens. I, well, so I actually think Parallax Wave would win it, win it for us if we can survive. 
Okay, so just casting guys in pass. I think so, yeah. And then I think it is, yeah, exactly, like, we have to draw this turn. Or no, we're actually just dead on board. I guess we should attack with the ground creatures. Yeah, I forgot that they were all going to gain flying, not just the spirits. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough. We had a lot of draws that would have won that turn. Yeah, it's it's justice, though. Inka has shown us what he does <laughs> <Yeah>. in cube. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. <laughs> and it's possible... <laughs> I don't know, maybe they don't go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're not dead on board. Okay, well, so they they plus again. So, Parallax Wave or Ancestral and Parallax Wave? That would do it, yeah. And they're still attacking. Okay. Come on, deck Parallax Wave. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to hold that in hand and swing in with the two ground creatures. Sounds good. And so if they block them both, which they probably will do, we still... Oh, no, we're, yeah, we're, we're not dead, actually, on board. Oh, I guess that, yeah, that makes sense. All right, pass turn. So they really? have seven attackers, so we can block with a selfless spirit if they attack with everything. Therefore, they can attack with everything. So we still have one more draw. Unless they also have... Wait, uh, they wait. have that? Okay. Strange. I mean, Shinobi, or, uh, Inka is scary. I can see why they would be afraid. <laughs> so here's the thing. If we draw Parallax Wave now... Oh, wait, no, because we still have to chump. Mm, yeah. We'll see. If, if Inkai's drew the removal so that Parallax Wave is lethal, that would be so good. Wait, now we just take this? We can, yeah. still, we can still win. Inkai's, come on, Parallax Wave. Please duck. Uh... <laughs> Dang it. I, I, I mean, I think we're dead. Hopefully they play around something here. Yeah, that's our only hope. Oh wait, also they're making, yeah, they're making three more, so Parallax Wave probably would not make enough anymore. Dang it, this Elspeth. We were in really <laughs> good position, they just, they really top deck very well for a couple turns. Yeah, that was the one turn for them, so that's lethal. That's nine. Yeah. Alright, good games opponent. Good games. Brutal. What a match. Brutal start, but we got more. Inkai's has some juice in him left. For sure. See you guys round two. Hello and welcome to round two. Playing against Leodri and we're on the play. Let's draw Ancestral. Uh, I think I like this. Yeah, I think I'm inclined to keep two. Really high upside if we hit a land. Um, definitely awkward if we don't, but we still have some two mana plays. Yeah, I'm going to lead on the fetch. Because um, Wasteland would be so brutal. Yeah. Are we going to be getting a Watery Grave with this? Yes, probably. But I don't really want to fetch right now. Yeah, especially against Island. Yeah, because like, they could kill it, which is one thing, and we also want to draw lands. I think just playing a Plains again. Yeah, that seems good. And then I think I would just run out the Containment Priest end of turn to have like a blocker slash attacker. Yep. I think I also want to fetch Water Grave end of turn, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm on board with Containment yeah, Priest. So. It is some anti-synergy with Ashiok. That's true. But it, I think if we have Ashiok in play, we're doing fine. Yeah. Um, so we go this, Ashiok. Or do you like it? Does it matter really if you attack first or not? Oh, uh, you got to tap black there. But um, probably not. I mean, yeah, probably not. I guess like technically if they have a removal spell and a counter spell, then, and they like decided to use a removal spell, but they, would, they wouldn't do that. Yeah. Also ignore me tapping the wrong, like, I tapped every single possible <laughs> way wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Palancron. Mm. I feel like we're playing against some Storm. Yeah. Well, we don't have much counter magic or any hand disruption. This could be a bit tough. They did lose their palancron. Ashiok is good against Storm. I know. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But I guess we got two cards out of their hand. That's a good one. Ooh, finally. Um, I kind of want to just do it on their upkeep. Yeah, I can get behind that. I mean, yeah, we, we lose the ability to play something sweet this turn, but like we don't have anything three mana that's that good. Well, and then we can like, Snapcaster Recall end of turn. Oh, true. Or also in their upkeep. Wait, make, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to go for this, or if they tap out for something. Because I, I just I want to make sure we resolve at least one of these. Yeah. It's nice that the Force of Negation is gone. Ooh. Do we just I run it? I think I would just throw a Snap Ancestral here, too. Yeah, okay. I'm on board. That's so many cards. Although I guess it, does, it gives them Storm. I forgot about that. But I don't think they can go off this turn. Famous last words. I would be impressed. We have days. That's good. Five cards, four things in play. Yeah, I don't think they can really go off here. Now we have a million cards in hand. So Holy that's cow. Cool. 
Um, I'm gonna start by attacking. And well, I, do we want to play Gideon? Yeah, I guess I like Gideon. So we play Gideon, and I can only really play Gideon. I think that's still worth it, though. I mean, like we could just play Recruiter of the Guard and stuff, but just this is the most power we can get him to play, and that seems good. Yeah, I'm gonna give Snapcaster Lifelink. Sounds good. And this is also a lot harder for them to interact with, and the the ultimate is not. I mean, it's it's pretty good. So it at least gives us some answer to like I don't know if they play Thousand Year Storm or something. We haven't done that in two turns. There's no way we can speed that up. But do we have any disruptive pieces to get with Recruiter here? I guess Snapcat. Oh no, Snapcat doesn't play. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. This is toughness two or less bribery. I, I kind of think we should just daze just to save the information because I think we can win either way. Oh wait, no. <laughs> well, continue to pre-stress that down. A. Yeah. So I think that's fine, and B, we could yeah. Fractured Identity whatever they get. Well, it'll already get exiled, though. Yeah, so we'll just let that happen. Yeah, they'll see, they'll see our ninjas, but they probably can't do too much about that anyways. Yeah. It's unfortunate that they... The other downside is I guess they learn about this interaction. Yeah, true. I hate to say it, since I know you do like Storm, but I, I do tend to play against Storm a bit more when I lose round one, I've noticed. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> Storm... Well, there's two reasons. One, it's really hard to draft, so you just run into like a lot of terrible storm decks, and it's really high variance. So, like, if you are going to trophy with storm, you need a lot of skill and a lot of luck. Yeah. But I, I think storm is one of my highest win rate decks, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Do you have any stats or anything like that? Um. So I have a bunch of stats that I'm, I'm mostly just gonna have my Discord people go through my YouTube history and <laughs> tell me like my deck list, and then I'm going to do a bunch of data analysis on it. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I think basically Storm is very bimodal, where like either I 3-0 or, you know, 1-2 or 2-1. Um, I think I'm going to go Lifelink again. But yeah, I think it's better than people give it credit for because you just run into a lot of bad Storm decks online, but it's not as good as like just Mono White or something like that. Yeah. The main benefit is it's... In the similar vein of like why mono white so good is a storm is almost always open, at least the high tide variant. So you you do get a lot of value that way of like there's a bunch of cards nobody else wants. Yeah. Um. And it's hard to interact with for a lot of decks for sure. Yeah. I kind of want to just play recruiter and see what we have, and then jam selfless spirit. I I feel like I kind of like wall actually because wall could draw us a counter spell, and I think we already have lethal next turn. Okay. Yeah, I'm on board with that. And if we did hit, like, a remand, that would definitely lock it up. Uh, do we still play Selfless? Probably, yeah. Plays around the board super slightly. I mean, we still have Gideon as lethal attacker, but... Yeah. I think this is the point of the game where, like, really nothing we do matters. Yeah. Except, like, marginal points if they have, like, Languish into Brazen Borrower. Which could happen. Yeah. Although, I guess, against that specific line, then playing Selfless is the worst. But yeah. against another Sweeper. All right, what'll it be, opponent? We just have days. I wish we had Thalia, although I guess Thalia is kind of awkward. No, it'd, it'd be okay in this deck. Did we see a Thalia in the draft? I don't think so. I mean, maybe pack one. I only saw Ancestral because we really didn't see that pack, but we're not yeah. taking Thalia over that. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, green. So that tells me they probably have Fast Bond or Leovold. I may be yeah, I've been keeping track of my statistics by deck, and I haven't done like a full analysis of it yet. I'm going to do that at the end of the season, but. The two decks where I have an over 50% trophy rate are Blue Eye Control and Mono White. So those are, those are definitely my two most successful ones just from a trophy perspective. That sounds, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Again, because White is just so open all the time. So when you get, when you're drafting those decks, you're going to get all of the cards. Yeah. Yeah, I think Blue White, like mid range aggro, is probably up there for me too. Um, That's so sort of what this deck is. Yeah, except this one, it's missing a couple pieces. All right, what do we like here? Brain Freeze is okay. We really have not seen much of their deck at all. Yeah, I kind of want to... Hmm. Shriekmaw and Necrotal look a bit awkward. Yeah, as does Paragrounds Warden. Yes. So we could cut these. I like Paragrounds Warden more than the rest of them because this isn't a must. Like, if they don't have creatures, we just have to kill our own. Yeah. Um... I kind of like Gear Hulk over some stuff. It at least gives us like a counter. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And then it's like Brain Freeze, Baral, or like a Bane Slayer if we think they're going the Tendrils route. Correction on Arena is also somewhat reasonable, but I think I would lean towards Brain Freeze here. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm on board with that too. If they like Palancron, because it looks like they have Palancron, so they probably get a bunch of Storm. So if we just hold this up, we can get them. I also want to cut some swamps. Oh yeah, good point. If Brain Freeze is their main win condition, we can also bring in Olmog, but we haven't seen that yet, so it could be a bit preemptive. Yeah, I think I'm just going to cut two swamps, run it like that. Seems good. We really don't have many black cards at all right now, mostly just splashing for ink eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is terrible in this matchup. With power but... like that, we well, we could like <laughs> just kill a Palancron, then we get back their Palancron. <laughs> I just want to deal lethal with Ink Eyes one time. That's all I want. Yeah, it's definitely going to happen. I Yeah, definitely going to happen. Um, hmm. This seems bad. What would it be? I guess Fruiter could get like a snap, but that doesn't do too much. Yeah, we could probably do better than this. Yeah, it's just like, it's slow. Ooh, yeah, I'll keep this. Yeah. I... Oh, what if we... Is Swamp too greedy? I, I'm deciding between Swamp and Identity. Mostly just because they're Storm, but we could probably get rid of Swamp. It just feels sacrilegious to bottom a Fractured Identity, but you're right that it's not great in this matchup. I'm going to get rid of Swamp because we have three lands and a Remand, and we're on the draw. Yeah, that seems reasonable. But, I, I don't know. Ooh, that's going to be good for uh, Remand. They suspended Lotus Bloom. Yeah. Hopefully they're handed bad and they were really banking on that bloom. Do you find that? So I actually, I just like made a little archetype guide myself and I sort of broke down each deck into like the different types. And so the, the types of storm that I, I identified were High Tide Storm, Blue Red Ritual Storm, and like Yogmoth Will, LED Storm. Mm -hmm. Which of those three do you think is the strongest? Uh, hang on. Some of them I door actually. I'm going to be right back. Sorry, this is kind of okay, weird. Yeah. Um, what was the question you asked? Sorry, I, I don't know if I recorded that or not, but I was getting groceries. No worries. I, um, I sort of, in my head, I break apart Storm into three different builds. Like, they have some overlap, but there's, like, mostly Mono Blue High Tide Storm, mm -hmm. Blue Red Ritual Storm with, like, Gifts and Pass and, pass and Flames, and, um, and, like, Yogmoth's Will, LED, Lotus Bloom Storm. Which of those three do you find the strongest? I see. Yeah, I think probably the Yogmoth's Will is... I think it has the potential to be the strongest, but it's also the most cut. Um, in that, like, that makes sense. it's the most well known. So when people think Wait, they're I like, think like oh. oh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, yes, I, I definitely should have. I sorry, I'm all messed up. Some dude just showed up at my door, and I'm like freaking out. That was a huge punt. No worries. Um. Okay, so that happening. Do we just hold off again? I think so. Like countering that, the Lotus Bloom seems pretty good. Yeah, okay. I gotta focus again. Um, so we go Plains, Pass, and then Remand Lotus Bloom, and then we can Bitter Blossom Selfless Spirit. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, to answer your question, I, I think I value High Tide the most. Um, it just has the strongest lines, and the mana generation is less disruptible, because like there are only a couple counter spells that deal with High Tide effectively. Like Mana Leak and things like that, you can just pay mana, because it's only one mana. Yeah. Whereas if you go for Yogwell, like you discard your hand. Ooh, what is this? Force of Negation. Okay. Well. Unfortunately, Fractured Identity doesn't really work against Lotus Bloom. Yeah. I think I would still go for it, but they're just going to have a lot of mana next turn. Yeah. Uh, nope, Ooh. that doesn't help. <laughs> Punished for not doing the Swamp. Although I guess we wouldn't have had the Fractured Identity either way. Yeah. Um, in situations like this, do you like playing the land or using Mox Diamond? Generally playing the land, I think it's a bit harder to interact with lands. Like, if they have a repeal on the Mox Diamond, that's pretty rough. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Also, we have Sphinx's Rev, so we can, like, draw into lands to Mox Diamond. Then I'm just going to go yeah. Bitter Blossom Selfless Spirit. Yeah, yeah. seems good. Um, but yeah, I think all the Storm decks have a chance. Probably the worst one is the Ritual Pass and Flames one. But if you combine that with High Tide, then it gets really good. Yeah. Basically, the blue-red and the mono-blue, like, have overlap, but the Yogwill one doesn't really overlap that much with the mono-blue one. And then you get into weird storms where you have, like, Gaia's Cradle plus Empty the Warrens, which is pretty sweet. Hmm. Yeah, like... You Ga have some storm decks that are just truly ridiculous, like, just wacky win conditions or, like, Mind's Desire into Eldrazi or <laughs> lots of different avenues. I honestly think, like, Mind's Desire into Eldrazi is one of the better win conditions, too, because it's pretty hard to interact with and it lets you like shuffle your graveyard back in if they deal with like your one brain freeze or whatever there yeah are you sad that there's no more underworld breach in the cube oh my gosh yeah Ooh. 
<laughs> we need to land oh, yeah, so we bad. Need land. We need to land and we can steal it. Land. Come on, deck land. Please. Perfect. Hey, got there. Um, I think I'm going to shock still. Yeah, I think I like that play. Identity, you. Please don't have spell pierce. I'm interested now. They have Frack Bird Battle Sphere and Storm. <laughs> I mean, we've only seen Palancron. They could just be like a weird deck that didn't really get there and are playing some dicey cards. Yeah, I know that. I know that all too well. <laughs> 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 I have concluded what the absolute worst win condition is in Storm, though. What's that? It's the the stupid. What is it? The double blue thing that you win the game if you have no cards in library or whatever. Oh, it's Oracle. Yeah, I tried to make that work, and it was just so bad. Like, Laboratory Maniac is better. But you can Brain Freeze yourself, but I guess that still just makes it a lot more pieces that you need. Yeah, because if you just Brain Freeze them, like, you win. Yeah. Control yeah. Magic, the Battle Sphere. Okay. Well, it would have well, been nice if we had more Fairy Tokens, but that's on me. <laughs> we still do have the resources to kill the Battle Ball, but... It's not actually no. That's not even that bad. We can block with everything and then just sack the selfless spirit. Yeah. Um. I kind of like just playing Ashiok. Yeah, I think that seems pretty good. I mean, usually it's amazing because they have so few win conditions. That it looks like they might have more here, but it still could be good. Yeah. It also tells us more about what is going on over there. True, because we do not know right now. Yeah. Watch us just hit like three mid-range creatures. Coalition relic swamp and Katolta Forge Master. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna hold everything back. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, can we kill the battle spear? Oh wait, no, not if we sack the selfless spirit. We'd have to lose all of our creatures, but we can. Um, maybe that's not worth it. Actually, maybe we should just. Uh, I kind of like just. I mean, we only take four, right? Because we could just chump. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna attack. Yeah, that seems good. I mean, they could hit the Ashok for four, but that's still fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Then we just gain four life, and we have a Sphinx's Rev in hand. Plus, like our clock in the air is not terrible. True, yeah, and getting better every turn. We um, we, What we should really do is side in Bolas the Citadel and then try and Ashiok Dare Cold Author Forge Master and get that going. <laughs> now that's some high tech. Do we Wait, do we pick up a Citadel? I think it's in the... Oh, maybe not, actually. Yeah, maybe not. Because that we, would be like, sweet. We started pretty late, but I don't think we took it. All right, I think we're probably going to get rid of Brain Freeze now. I have no idea what's going on over there, though. Yeah, uh, that, seems, that seems good. Maybe. If they give us this talisman, what are we what are we searching for? That's what I was thinking about. So coalition relic on or not coalition relic. Um, co the thing that exiles permanence on control magic would be pretty okay. We could also get a parallax wave to just take out all of their creatures. That's true because this is a token. Yeah. Um, we could just keep it in hand, like just not use it, so they don't get another tutor. True. Yeah. Um, I think it really depends on what we draw. I part of me thinks they're gonna activate it and get like a draw seven. Mm, yeah, I can imagine that. Is this going at us or at Ashiok? So it's going at our face, I think. That is a four turn clock, and we're losing like to Bitter Blossom. But we do but have we Sphinx's Rev. A lot. Oh yeah, they're completely tapped out. Time walk would be brutal, I guess. Oh true, yeah. But we can gain life off Sphinxes, and if they don't do anything, we can hit them for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is a two turn clock. Do we have any artifacts to search up with the Forge Master? I don't think so. We cut our signet. We have our Mox Diamond in hand, and I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we draw a land. See, now, good thing we saved the Mox Diamond. We can play Mox Diamond in red for three instead of two. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to start here. Um, not sure how I feel about up ticking versus down ticking Ashiok. I think I actually I was initially on autopilot uptick, but I actually think downtick might be better here because like the game is going to end in the next couple turns almost definitely. Although yeah. maybe we should rev first and see if that changes anything. I also kind of want to hold up remand in case they like in case they grab a draw seven, then our rev doesn't do anything. That's fair. Yeah. So would that be just pass and like only rev for one or rev for two now and hope to draw remand in those two? I would pass and then only rev end of turn. Because if they draw okay. seven, then a rev doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, and then, uh, you like down ticking, but up ticking could eat something they're trying to tutor for. Well, so we're hitting them. Are we attacking with everything this turn? I guess is the first question. Because 
if we attack with everything, then Mer Battlesphere is lethal. So we make sure we want to have at least two blockers. I, yeah, I think probably down ticking is just safer in that regard then, because it also makes it much easier to block enough to kill the battle ball. Well, do we want to leave back that many things or just attack all out? Um, we swing out that seven. We have one blocker. I think I want to leap back some stuff. Yeah, because we also can't hit them for seven again if they don't tap all them here. So we don't have lethal in two turns either way. Okay, so we're going to attack with at least the spirit and the fairies, probably like two mirror. Well, next then... turn we have five in the air. So, and then the turn after we could have six in the air. Mm -hmm. So that's 11. So we only need to deal three this turn, but they could also disrupt that. So I think I like attacking with one mirror and two fairies. Okay, so let's start there. And then we still need, so like this. Yeah, that actually makes sense to me. And then actually, if we're only attacking with this, I think we can plus with Ashiok. Then. Yeah, uh, actually, the more I think about it, plusing just makes sense, because it's not like the 3-5 is going to do a whole lot. We're winning in the air, not in the ground. Yeah. And eating some of the things they could tutor for seems nice, like a Narset. Yeah. All right, go ahead. So by not casting Rev, we're down one land drop, probably. So we'll see if that matters. Seems pretty unlikely. Yeah, I think it... Like, the most likely tutor I could see is them grabbing Time Spiral. Alright, what'd you get? I don't even know if Time Spiral's that good. You know it would be really bad. What? Oh, no, that wouldn't be so bad. Um, I was thinking Fiery Confluence. Mm -hmm. Wait, well... But we have a 1-1 one, one Fairy, so it's not so bad. Oh. Well, our Rev is looking nice now. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we waited. <laughs> <laughs> so, they don't have enough for Palancron. They probably have, like, a Turnabout or something like that. Or just time spiral. Hmm, that could be. So I think, uh... I'm gonna let that resolve. Yeah. I think that's good, yeah. Basically, if they do something, I think I'd probably just rev to try and hit remand. You think that's better than... Yeah, yeah, I do think that's probably better than them getting infinite cards and mana. And, like, we have a better chance of hitting a remand off the seven, but... Actually, that's not even true. We have 11 mana. Yeah, we have so much Sphinx's rev. I want to know what they're... Last, okay, so they do have Time Spiral, so I'm just going to Rev, because if we counter this, we win on the spot. Yeah, and then just leaving up two mana. Yeah, which will be just a uh, Hollowed Fountain, I guess. And we have Remand and Daze, and that's it, I think. Oh yeah, Daze too. So Hollowed Fountain, we, I guess we can like path the something. Yeah. Okay. We have no ways to bounce the Mana Flare, unfortunately. Which is fine. We, we're pretty likely to hit something here. We also gain a bunch of life. Okay. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to daze without paying the mana. Play around their days. Yeah. That seems good to me. Because we, we untap with a mana flare in play, and we get to Ink Eyes. No, they don't have anything. <laughs> but Ink Eyes will do lethal flying damage. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, it, does, it changes the clock significantly, so it does help us here. So if we get to untap, I'm going to Wishclaw Talisman for Fallen Shinobi, double ninja, and they will be nine damage exactly together. We also can brain freeze them out here, but I'm I don't want them to concede before we get our ninjas in play, so we shouldn't do it. Yeah. And I don't like them knowing about this. Oh wait, this well, is this game is two. Game. Yeah, never mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing they can do here, right? No, I don't think so. No mana. Like Okay. Yeah. Double ninjas for the win. So I want to point out that me, ooh, oh my gosh, that me not playing Bitter Blossom allowed us to win this game early, or later. True, that's a great point, yeah. Oh, wait. No, no, we're fine. So I tap here, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is exactly enough to activate both. Perfect. Perfect. All right, we get Fallen Shinobi. I'm going to play an island. I'm going to attack with uh, just two flyers. Yeah, I think that's a bit more flavorful. Yeah, let's do the math again. So Fallen Shinobi, or Ink Eyes is double black. So one, two, three, four. Wait, are we one short? Because we have the mock on too. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have exactly enough. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Ink Eyes. Ninjutsu. <laughs> Truly beautiful. <laughs> Well, in Shinobi, really trying to not mess this up. Ninjutsu. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought it was exactly lethal. Okay. It's still cool, though. 
No! <laughs> oh man, that was glorious. See you guys, round three. All right, we're here for round three against Og the Man. We are on the play. Have we won every die roll? I think so. That's pretty Love awesome. To I'm going to keep this because we have the wombo combo. Hopefully we're playing a creature deck. This, this would be really sweet to pull off in game one. Yeah. No and black mana, but that's fine. I'm trying to think what I want to lead on. Probably Hollowed Fountain. I think I would do that, yeah. Because even if they do have a wasteland, we still have more lands, and we'd rather them hit this than a black source if we yeah. eventually draw one. Red green. I like that. Oh. Brutal. I'm going to play Seachrome Coast. And that Dark Slick Shores on for next turn. Yeah. That hurts. The one I thing to really... keep in mind with this combo is that, oh, wow, lots of colors. Okay. Ooh. It might not be what we expected. I'm just going to Containment Priest. Yeah, I support that. One thing to keep in mind is that even if the, the Containment Priest is in play when you exile them with Parallax Wave, it has to be in play when they leave. I see. Okay, that's good to know. Man, we really need that black source. I know. <laughs> Please, just one time. If they kill our priest, I almost want to just path our own priest. Oh, never mind. All right, we really need to draw land here. I mean, any land, like Parallax Wave would be good too, but wow, mm -hmm. they really have a spicy mana base. Yes! Okay, so what do we go for here? We can attack or we can Parallax Wave. I think I like attacking. Like, Fallen Shinobi and Thief of Sanity both have good like hitting them triggers, but I think Shinobi wins that battle. Okay. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Let's attack. If they block, it's a little bit awkward, but yeah, they're not going to. All right, we could just win here. We could also hit two lands, but... Get him. The... Ooh. All right, that's good. I'm just going to kill the Thief. Seems smart. The classic Johnny Vengeance Thief of Sanity deck. <laughs> with the Taiga in it. <laughs> 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 this is more ambitious than even I'm comfortable with sometimes. So I know... For a fact, my lowest win rate deck is five color aggro. <laughs> aggro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the Geist of St. Traff Sulfuric Vortex deck, lowest win rate out of all of them. <laughs> the one game when your lands line up is good, but then you just command screw 10 times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> well, this looks really bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think I just want a parallax wave. I think I like that, yeah. Yeah, so we'll play around days, I Wait, guess. I guess that probably... So it does mean we can't play land off of a Shinobi hit, but I think that's fine. Like, I think if we get another hit, we'll win either way. Yeah. All right, we're going to do this. Because I, I basically just don't want them getting lands um, to do whatever they have going on. We're yeah. Gonna attack. And the nice thing is they have so many colors, like, who knows what they could have here. Yeah. Ooh, that's... <laughs> what do you got? All right, so here's their deck. They have... They're mostly Grixis. Okay, so they're just splashing. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so they're they're just splashing the Golos activation, it seems. Yeah. Um, Counterspell Cryptic, Mystic Confluence. That's a lot of counter magic. Yeah, good Torrential Gear Hulk deck. Also, Cold Guns Command. Ooh, okay. Heartless Act. Urza with something. Sort of Body and Mind. All right. I think we're pretty well set up for this type of matchup. Yeah. Necrotal looks a bit awkward again. We played against a lot of black decks. Yeah, we could, like, I like having at least one of them, but cutting that seems I agree, okay. Yeah. I guess, yeah, hits Urza and not Gear Hulk, not, um, not obviously, they're black creatures. I kind of like the procession because they didn't show too many flyers. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Honestly, that should probably just be in our deck since ninjas are a big part of our game plan. Yeah, like, maybe we should just main deck procession over Necrotal because of how bad it is if we fight a black deck. Yeah. And also, I think given that we have the two ninjas, we might have wanted to prioritize Ling Rituals a bit higher. I forget what we took over it. I think it was really good. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know. I'm going to run it like this, I think. We could cut a swamp for another land. Since oh, we're cutting yes. Yeah, good call. Card. Um, Probably blue? Yeah, I can get behind that. We do have Spectral Procession, but we already have a ton of white sources, so I think that's fine. Yeah, I just want to maximize our chances of Days and Ancestral early. Yeah. Yeah. And we have not drawn Ancestral very much this league. No. The one game... Well, we cast it twice in one turn. That's true. So I guess we can't really complain. I think I'm going to keep this hand. It's slow, but most of our hands are. We have turn one day, days if we need to. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did I see Wasteland? I'm just going to play this tapped, I think. Wasteland seems so ambitious in a five-color deck. Yeah. Well, they do have Golos, 
so it could be a tutor yeah. target yeah. and sometimes i'll run wasteland just as like an 18th land is like a spell basically yeah that's fair i don't want to counter that i don't think yeah i think i agree either way that would be putting us back one mana compared to them that's a good point yeah all right so now we go island go this fractured identity looks good against their deck though finally a good matchup yeah. for it yeah okay mm. We might want to cancel the judgment that. I think I do. I think I like just dazing it here. Yeah, it's not going to get much better. And yeah, I think I like cancel the judgment because we do also have fractured identity for like other scary permanents. I think. Well, now that they're tap, like now that they can't generate two mana from it, it's a bit less scary. I think I would actually not do that here. My biggest concern is how much counter magic they showed. So, like, if they just go land go, and then, like, Mystic Confluence something. Yeah, that's a good point. Like we know, could they just... also don't have double blue right now, and they have Cryptic in their deck. Yeah, that's basically the tempo hit of not doing anything here seems really harsh. Yeah, yeah, I think that seems good, actually. I'm, I'm pro Council Judgment now. Okay. Get out of there. Especially, like, we have things that answer creatures, and I didn't really see many Planeswalkers from them. Or is it here, maybe? Bribery. Okay. Well, I think we're about to get a Fallen Shinobi. We're going to Fairgrounds Warden whatever they hit. That seems good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't go for Ink Eyes. Bold oh. play. So we can just Fractured Identity or we can Fairgrounds. I kind of like Fairgrounds. I think so too. Saving the, the Identity for something scary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like proactively, it would be better to Fractured Identity, but I think we can be a bit more reactive here and, and still win. Oh, the, oh, if we draw Ink Eyes... Oh, we don't have double black, actually. But it'd be pretty <laughs> sweet to put Shinobi into play with our Ink Eyes attack. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Maybe we no, still we can, though. Go. We could Fractured Identity the Rakdos Signet, and then... No. <laughs> <laughs> they do nothing. This is, like, the weirdest reverse ninjutsu. Yeah. So I'm going to attack. I kind of want to play Parallax Wave. Uh, why? So that we can Parallax Wave our own Fairgrounds Warden. But the awkward thing is Parallax Wave goes away in our upkeep, so we wouldn't actually get to attack. No, we just... Oh, wait, no, I'm, that, never mind. Like, yeah, what... I think that is a good move, yeah. Okay, because I don't want to Sphinx of Red for two, and this means, like, yeah, I'm just going to play this. Because if they play anything now, we can eat it when this comes back, and now they're in the awkward spot of do they kill our fallen, like, this? Or do they counter this card that's probably not that good against them? Bouncing the Fairgrounds Award, that is interesting. Much prefer that over uh, them countering our Fractured Identity. For sure. And now, like, the pressure's sort of on them. They have to deal with the Shinobi, which means we have a good window to resolve Rev, potentially. Yeah. I feel like they just didn't interpret how that would work, given that they're messaging us. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Well, I can't even type the word confusing properly, so I guess that's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a Golos. Golos would be fine. With a Mox Diamond, we can maybe get there on the five colors. That's, yeah. We have, no, we got rid of our Signet. Urza, I guess, makes two blockers, but one of them is bad. Oh, it's too bad the Parallax Wave is gone. Another thing. Okay. Um, well, now we can get a hit in. That seems pretty good. Yeah, do we want a Fairgrounds Warden or a Fractured Identity to Urza? That's I think pretty close. Fairgrounds Warden is safer because then we have Fractured Identity if they play like a Karn or something. Yeah, and we can still play Selfless Spirit to protect both the Warden and the Shinobi. Okay, we're going to go for that line. And I'm going to lead with Fairgrounds to play on days for whatever value that gives us. Um, it is awkward if they get it back and they get another Construct, but I don't think they'll be able to get it back. Yeah, so I mean, we're getting it hidden. And... They also have one card. Oh, I wish we had a Lutero Core. That'd be so good for their ninjas. Ooh, yeah. Lutero Core Ink Eyes, get there. Yeah. <laughs> We still okay. I hope we, I hope they have a creature in the graveyard at some point this game. We got at least back the chupacabra. True, that is true. Yeah. Um, we can just tar pit, play the spirit pass. Not the best hit. Yeah, this seems like a pretty favorable position. All right, we need them to discard a creature. Have... Sorry, what did you say? Yeah, hopefully they pick like a torrential gear hulk or something big. <laughs> nope. Never lucky. So, let me think. Upheaval would be the worst thing we could see, maybe? Mm, yeah, they would immediately get back their, their Urza, too. Two damage, and we discard. Okay, I mean, I sacrifice. Yeah. And I think I'm just going to discard Mox Diamond. Yeah, that's seems fine. 
Okay. Imagine how devastating it would be if we got in an ink eyes hit, and in response, they just returned the creature to their hand in the Golgon's command. Oh, that would suck so much. Um, it's probably better just to attack with Shinobi and not Fractured Identity the Construct. Yeah, I mean, Shinobi hits are good, but like Fractured Identity is probably even better. Yeah. We still have a rev. And we get to rev, so okay. And do we attack with the Fairgrounds Warden? I think so. Yeah, if they block that, that is fine by us. Yeah. And then next turn we can Creeping Tar Pit or something. They have one card in hand. I, wow. think, I actually think we might want to... Uh, I think it might have been slightly better rev on our turn just in case they have Cryptic, but... Oh, that's gonna, true. Like, yeah, or at least on their upkeep, maybe? Yeah, well, yeah. Should I just rev now before they draw, then? Mm -hmm. Honestly, probably. I think that seems solid. Okay. Blue. Like, I don't think that would really change their information. Like, they're still going to want the same sorts of, sorts of cards. Yeah, and this way, like, they spend their turn Cryptic Commanding instead of doing anything else. Okay. Not the best ever, but we still drew four cards. I guess, technically, if I wanted to be correct, I'd do it in response to the loot trigger. That way, like, if they drew a ninja or something, they wouldn't be as ambitious with it. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't think it matters that much. And then, yeah, I think at this point, with their life total getting fairly low it, and, like, having a remand in hand, it might be smart just to fracture identity most blockers here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remand makes it pretty hard to lose from this spot. I mean, this is their one window. Do they have the upheaval? Wait, did we, we saw their deck. Did they have it? I didn't see an upheaval, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, well, they get two yeah, blockers. Okay. They might tap one of their blockers again. Still no creatures in their graveyard. Yeah, it's pretty nice that we can activate their tar pit. Yeah, that is really nice. Okay, they're just going... They hit Ancestral oh, Vision? <laughs> brutal. Oh, that's fun. They actually are sort of in it now, but I, I think we actually showed this fresh identity here. We guys are now. Yeah, I didn't think they would do that, actually. I mean, they drew three, but... Let me think about this. So, one, two, three, four, five. So we can fracture the Urza and hold up Remand. That seems... Yeah. And I'm just going to play Planes, I guess. We could wait so we can play Land from them. Okay, fair enough. Do that. Fractured Urza. We get a thing. We hit them for five, and then they need a blocker. Otherwise, Tar Pit will kill them. What do we get? Chromebox, Sword of Body and Mind. The Chromebox does not look great here. Uh, oh, we oh, no. We, actually, wait. It's, with Urza, it is good. Never mind. We don't have to imprint. Yeah, we don't have to do anything. So, wait, no. so we have one, two, three, four, five. We get, oh. We're so close to being able to spin Urza and hold up Reman, but we can't quite. Can we play Gideon and hold up Reman though? I think we can. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Okay, do that. And I'm going to use the Urza mana now because, I don't know, if they kill Urza or something. Yeah, although we need double white. Yeah, though. double white. Do that. Gideon makes this one. Doesn't matter. Go. All right, opponent, what do you yeah, got? They have a lot of cards now from the Ancestral, but they only have six mana and we have Reman. Still a little scary. I just want one creature to go to the graveyard. Yeah. We're not really helping that out, though. We All our removal exiles, pretty much. Ooh. So that's going away. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I guess they killed Gideon and Shinobi. That's something. That's fine. I think they basically die. Oh, wait, yeah, we can animate Tar Pit and put the sword on the Tar Pit. Yeah. Um, that hits them for five, so they go to one currently. Man, we needed uh, uh, Ink Eyes there out of one. Yeah. I mean, we could... No, because you can't hit it off Urza. Yeah, I think it's hard to do better than just Tar Pit with sword. That's true, but I actually still think we should Urza, because I think we're going to win either way, and that's more fun. Okay. I like that a lot. So you don't want to cast Spectral Procession. I don't think well, we, we can do that, that after. But like start with Urza and then see what we hit. So you don't want to attack with the construct? I would probably lean towards attacking with the construct, but then tapping like Chromox and some lands to use Urza. Okay, so we'll go Chromox, Sword. And then we need three, four, five to activate Urza. Then we can still We're leaving up one white for the for spectral procession. What's up? Leaving up a white for a spectral procession there, I think, probably. Okay. Alright, let's hit it, guys here. Activate Urza. Dark Slick Shores. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's activate this. Uh, we do have to shock off Watery Grave, but that's okay. Wait, to play, to equip a sword, we don't. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, if we're, yeah, yeah, we're, we do. Yeah. 
up here. <laughs> that looks so weird. <laughs> uh, Alright, opponent has two cards in hand. They're going to go down to three cards in deck. Hope they don't have Yawgmoth's well. Or Thassa's Oracle. That would be amazing. <laughs> Alright, pass turn. See what happens. They have one creature, two cards. Please, no Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> We're in Power Stone. What do you got? It would take a really big play here. I'm trying to think, like, Villainous Wealth. <laughs> <laughs> would be, like, one of the only things. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kill him. Fair enough. Yeah, I have uh, groceries that are still cold just sitting on my... <laughs> yeah. Um, let's equip to the Urza, I guess. I don't think it really matters. So, solid 2-1 with this deck. It's a bummer we couldn't get that trophy. That first round was tough, but pretty sweet deck and some pretty sweet games. Yeah, the, the last two were way better, I think. F first round opponent drew really well, and we... I mean, we really never saw our Ancestral. Yeah. But I like the deck a lot. Yeah, me too. Had some pretty sweet synergies. Some pretty <laughs> sweet ninjas. Almost got there. I guess they could Cryptic Command our team. True, yeah. Um, but, but then I'm going to... They can't draw a card, because then they would die in their own draw step. That's true, yeah. I, I guess, guess technically we should have not animated Carpet. Because of this? Because then we could animate in, like after this. What are they oh, bouncing? Uh, they are bouncing the sword. Okay. That... I mean, they can hit us for... A decent amount of damage in Milla's 10, but I still think that's not enough. And we also have Path. Yeah, and I think I just cool. let this happen. I'm going to play Procession and then Path whatever creature they put the sword on. Yeah, that seems good. They're fighting hard. you got to respect it, but I think their efforts will be in vain here. You never know. So we cast this. They don't have any, like, time spirals or anything, right? I don't think so. I think that was round two that had time spiral. Hopefully this is just a sword. Yeah, it would have to be like time spiral in. Oh, <laughs> going out with style, I respect it. Yeah. <laughs> Death by sharks. Getting ready to go. GG's. <laughs> All right, cool. That was. Thank you so much for having me, man. This was really fun. Yeah, no problem. And for all the viewers, you just started a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so I will link that in the description um, or comment, maybe both. Just look down below. Um, or just look for him on the trophy boards. And maybe we could do this again. This was actually pretty fun. Yeah, I would definitely be up for that. We don't have too much time left in this Vintage Cube season, but maybe, and definitely in other ones at a later date as well. Yeah, I think probably going forward. I got to figure out my recording situation. Anyway, I'm going to end yeah. the video here. Thank you everyone for watching. See you guys next time.